Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. I have Kali Linux machine here running. I have left the installation process in the last tutorial because it was quite frankly pointless to just sit and wait through it and wait for it to finish primarily because Kali Linux installation it tends to be a bit longer than the installation of other Linux operating systems primarily because of the prepackaged tools that come with it. However, there were a few screenshots that I have made that some of the options that you were asked while the installation process was going on. So there were just three of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and open them up here. So the first one that happened was that I was asked, do you want to use a network mirror to supplement the software that is included on the CD-ROM? This may also make, uh, yeah, this may also make newer versions of software available. I said no, because I'm going to do an update as soon as I finish the installation process and as soon as I configure everything in the proper way. Uh, that's basic. The update is the part of the configuration that I'm going to do, so it doesn't matter. No, I do not want to use any mirrors or anything of a kind. I'm just going to say no and go ahead and proceed with the with the installation. So next up is the Grub. So Grub Bootloader it is asking me, uh, do you want to install the ma do you want to install Grub Bootloader to the master boot records? Yes, I do. Just click on it, as this is the only operating system on this machine, on this computer. Uh, there is nothing that I can mess up by installing the Grub bootloader to the master boot records of the first hard drive, as it is stated here in the instructions. You can use the Grub bootloader in order to configure multiple dual boots, or I don't know, you can boot three four five operating systems as many as you like as many as your hardware can support not at the same time of course but at boot time you'll be you will be prompted and asked which operating system do you wish to boot that's also one of the options that you can have with grub but aside from that just click yes there and there's a final one it simply states that the installation is complete and if you have used a CD to complete this installation or a USB or something of a kind, you will need to remove that media and re reboot the system in order for all of this to function. So that would be it. Uh, I was asked those three very simple questions. Uh, you have the answers here. Just go through them. It will not make a difference in the final account of things. Just going to go ahead and close this and now I'm going to go ahead and log into my Kali Linux virtual machine. So the username is, this is this is actually one of the rare occasions, actually this is pretty much the only occasions where I log into GUI with root. But as you can see, uh, as you will soon realize in Kali Linux everybody just logs in with root primarily because you are not using Kali Linux to browse the web or something like that. You are usually using it 99% of time to perform some sort of an attack and for all of those tools you need to be pretty much a Pretty much for all of those tools you need to be a root user or have root privileges. There's most of the time there's no point to have any other users on a on a Kali Linux distro. So type in root, press enter, password was test, press enter, yours is whatever you appointed it to be. Of course, if it's a virtual machine, you don't need to worry that much, but if it's your main machine or something like that and Kali is generally not recommended to be your main desktop machine. That's not a good idea. Rather run it as a virtual machine. Okay, so first there are I need to do a few things like updates in order for me to be able to install VirtualBox guest editions so that we may use full screen and that we may use share clipboard and so on and so forth. Just go ahead and change this open up my terminal, uh, set the view. The, this is non-technical stuff this you can do. This you can configure any way you like. I'm just zooming it in for the purposes of this tutorial so that you may see it better. But before we can do updates, before we can do 
anything, we must verify that we have connectivity to the internet. So ping, I don't know, yahoo.com. There we go. Nothing is happening. So I cannot ping yahoo.com, meaning that I don't have exit to the external network. I cannot uh, access the internet. That's a pretty big problem because pretty much whatever we do, we will need internet for it in order internet connectivity for it in order to download packets from the repositories to perform updates and to conduct scans, possible scans and so on and so forth. So just go ahead and click on devices, uh, find network, network settings. And here you can see it's set, by default it will be set to NAT, but you don't want the NAT, you want bridged adapter and you want to choose your adapter here. Mine is P8P1, see what yours is and click allow VMS, virtual machines. So okay, if you don't know what the adapter on your machine is and you are using a Linux system, just go ahead, open up your terminal and type in IF config. Here you will be able to see a listing of adapters that you have. So you have LO, which is loopback, you have P8P1, which is my Ethernet connection. This is for some virtual machines as well. And I have VLP2S0, which is my wireless interface. So I know that for a fact that I'm using P8P1 primarily because my network manager tells me that I am, you see, connected to P8P1. This is also a better way of actually checking uh, what you are connected to, which you, which adapter you are using. So just open up your network manager in the upper right corner and look at P8P1, it says connected. Your network manager's position can vary depending on how you've configured your system. By default, it will be in bottom right corner, but that is easy enough to find either way. Let's just go ahead and close this terminal. Now that we know now that we have actually configured our network, have we? Yes, we have. But still, I'm pretty sure I won't have internet connectivity. Let me just try ping again, and you see it is simply not working. So there is a problem once again. So let's just go ahead and check the Kali Linux Network Manager, and it says wired network but device not managed. That can be a problem, and that is a general problem which you will face with wired interfaces pretty much all the time. Uh, there's a relatively easy fix to it. You just navigate over in the terminal, you type in CD, which stands for Change Directory, to Etsy, Network Manager. Let's see what's in it. Excellent. We have Network Manager Config dot C O N F Conf. I'm going to go ahead and type in Nano, which is the which is the text editor that I'm going to be using and then type in networkmanager.com press enter there we go it opens up the configuration file you do need to be root in order to make any changes here it says main plugins if up down key file if up down managed equals false so where it says false just delete this and type in true control o to save press enter control x to exit now we need to actually restart our network manager. So just go ahead and type in service network. Uh, there we go. Network manager restart. Stopping and starting. Excellent. Connection established. You are now connected to if up down ETH zero. Let's check the connectivity. So ping yahoo oops yahoo.com excellent so now we have internet connectivity and pay pay attention to these steps here they're quite important because not so much for the ethical hacking part as they are to actually setting up the environment because setting up the environment itself can be troublesome you can have you can encounter multiple problems bugs etc and then instead of having to go from one forum to the other trying to find the solution you can just go through this tutorial just pay a bit of attention and i will show you pretty much how to resolve pretty much all the issues that you might encounter because i myself am doing a fr I, I have done a fresh install here and i would be encountering the same problems that anybody else would and I would like to go over them because more likely than not if you are performing a virtual machine installation you will encounter similar problems as I have although should you encounter any other problems please, please feel free to pose them to pose questions 
and I will be more than happy to provide any answers that I can. So let's just go ahead and clear the screen. And now that we have internet connectivity, I would like to perform a few, I would like to perform some updates, which are, which are necessary. Believe me, you need to perform regular updates of the system because you will find that certain things will not work after a while. So let me just change the directory, clear the screen again, type in app-get update. So I could do this with one command in Fedora, but here I'm going to need two of them. So it's picking up things from the repositories. Excellent. Now I need to type in app-get upgrade press and you see it says after this operation 73 megabytes of additional space of additional disk space will be used this is this last sentence here that I am marking and that is quite a bit in terms of updates I mean look at all the packages these are all the packages that are to be updated list goes on and on well there we go it starts from here and it doesn't end anytime soon it goes all the way down so anyway just type in yes you don't actually need to type in capital Y you can just type in Y press enter and the update process will start now depending on your internet internet connection this might take shorter or longer amounts of time I will end this tutorial here until the updates actually finish because I don't want to be standing here in front of the screen but in any case these updates will finish until the end uh, you can you're not going to be posed any questions at a certain point of time during the update process you might be notified of some things a screen might pop with some text that's perfectly fine just you can you can read through it and then close it those are readme files uh, specifying the characteristics of certain packages and what has been upgraded but don't 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 go ahead don't go about just reading it there you can close it later on if you wish, you can do further exploration and actually discover what each of these packages contains. In any case, uh, we will continue this process in the follow-up tutorial. Until then, I bid you all farewell.